Well, hello, everyone. Um, Babula and I are back with you again for another chat about the full moon in Gemini on the 8th of December. By the way, Babula, that's my birthday. On <laughs> that date, that is fantastic. <laughs> full moon birthday, I love it. Oh, no, my full moon in Gemini is just loving that. <laughs> <laughs> so... So uh, is this year going to go out with a bang or a whimper? That's what we're going to talk about this time uh, in this lunar cycle. So um, kick it off, Babula, where are we going? Well, I would say definitely not with a whimper. <laughs> <laughs> not, not with a I mean, it, th this year hasn't been a whimper a year. It's been the year of the tiger, you know, and there's been big energies happening this year with those big, you know, Saturn Uranus squares continuing to play out and put a lot of pressure on and so on. Um, so, yeah, from now to the end of the year, some interesting things. I mean, we're definitely out of that intensity. Well, not entirely, but in many ways out of that intensity of the previous month. That was particularly strong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I, I think, um, you know, at the moment we're experiencing a lot of water influence. So I think it might be helpful for people if I talk about that a little bit. Yeah. You know, and and as we speak and, and move towards this um, full moon, Neptune is stationary, meaning it's about to change direction. So it's at a, a kind of a standstill and um, we'll move forward technically on the fourth but with such a slow moving planet outer planet like neptune it's really around that whole week you know mm. leading up to the full moon mm -hmm. the first week and to the full moon that neptune's felt very strongly you know its presence is very strong in pisces so that's a very watery Isn't energy it yeah and neptune moving so slowly now um has been mm. and will be forming this strong series of um, squares to other planets. So, you know, it's already made two out of three squares to Mars. It's making squares to the planets in Gemini, you know, Mercury, Venus and the Sun. And and as I said, it's, it's now stationary, meaning its energy is really slowed down, so its energy is very present. Mm. And, Different people will be experiencing that in different ways, and a lot depends on what are our current circumstances and so on, and also, you know, who we are in our chart and so on. So for some, with such a strong Neptunian watery theme, mm. um, some people will be just feeling deeply exhausted, very, very tired, overwhelmed. Yes. <laughs> tired. Tired. You know, um, I think I think that's just it's also that culmination of that soul exhaustion for the last three years, isn't it? I do too, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think so you only need a little bit of something to happen, you go, oh no. <laughs> exactly. And and because this is all mutable energy, Neptune in Pisces, Mars is in Gemini, uh, Sun, Mercury, Venus are in Sagittarius, all forming these strong, you know, aspects or configurations to each other. That those mutable signs are, we experience them as things keep changing, things keep happening. Just when we think we're, okay, that's done, the next thing happens and the next thing happens and things are moving very quickly and it can feel very overwhelming. And mm. I find myself kind of looking heavenwards and saying things like, can you just hit the pause button for a minute? You know, give us a break, just stop. <laughs> Let me catch up, you know, let me take a break before the next. But it just keeps coming, you know. So it's like that. And the mutable signs teach us how to be fluid and how yeah. to flow. We like sometimes things to just stop and calm down and settle for the water to settle. But it isn't. It's moving all the time. Like Sagittarius is mutable fire. Mm. Gemini is mutable air and Pisces is mutable water. And those strong influences of Neptune are, are really, um, you know, a lot of people speak about it as being very spiritual and very blissful and very beautiful. Yes. And on a day-to-day -day human basis, it can just be exhausting and overwhelming. 
It's just being, it's just too much being spiritual. <laughs> it is. It's such <laughs> hard work. <laughs> and, and yeah, and we live these human lives. You know, I've been thinking about this, you know, and I sometimes sort of wistfully think of those past lives in nunneries and ashrams where all we did just sit and meditate. <laughs> oh, yes, beam me back to that. Said the Pisces. Said the Pisces. <laughs> but, you know, we live in this crazy world at this crazy time, you know, in, we're right in the middle of it. We're right in the thick of it. Mm. And, um, you know, we can do our very best to take a break and take time out, and but it's not easy. It's not easy. There's mm. this relentlessness to And I think it's been a big year. It's been a bit of a relentless year, so we're coming to the end of it. There's a lot of deep tiredness around, and I also know of a lot of people, quite a number of people, who are having to have um, operations, not due to an illness necessarily, but to, due to you know a lot of mechanical issues in the body and so mm -hmm. on. Um, Neptune, when we're feeling Neptune in that more like. It's like being in an undertow, you know, feeling like we're drowning because he's mm. the god of the seas and Pisces is the oceans. Now, spiritually, it's true. It can be very beautiful and blissful. But in, in the human sense, mm. it can be really very challenging. Yeah. I was going to say about that. But, um, yeah, sometimes in that state, we can feel like, I just want to get out of here. Where's the escape? You know, where's the escape hatch? And so for many, an escape route is just to hell with it and walk away from everything yeah. or to rely on addictions as a way of just getting through the day. Yes. You know? Yeah, it could even be something like coffee or chocolate or chips or something. Right. You know? <laughs> or, or, you know, maybe you normally have half a glass of wine at night you might find yourself having two or three because it's just all too yeah. much. And we know who you are. <laughs> We socialise with some of you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I do totally understand that urge. Mm. Yeah. So I think, you know, healthy ways to find that relief, and I think relief is an appropriate word here, is just yeah. to take time out, lie on the couch, watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cancel your appointments for a day if that's possible and just go to bed. You know, or yeah. up the meditation practice so that you've got time to just sit and relax and be and tune in and just let it all go, even if it's yeah. 10 minutes. Do you think with this full moon in Gemini, which, you know, it's about duality, about making choices. Yes. Um, this is this is sort of going to shine a light on some of those things like how am I using my time? What you know, what do I really want to do here? Yeah. Um that sort of thing, you know, like yeah. all these choices. And having to make a choice? Yes, ex exact, very much. So Gemini is duality and mm -hmm. multiplicity of all things. And Pisces and Neptune is everything. Yeah. So it's it's a lot like this continual, um, I don't know if barrage is the right word for what we're speaking about now, but just like a million things keep happening. That's yeah, how it yeah, feels. Yeah, and, yeah. and how do we navigate that? And stay sane and how do we make choices which which implies letting some things just have to go well i yeah. can't do that i can't do it all i can't do everything yeah exactly go. Mm. because the other sign on the mutable cross is virgo who wants to cross every t and dot every i and get everything mm. done perfectly and with this energy it's like we will end up you know having a coroner if we try and do everything can mm. be very stressful mm. Mm. so i'm just addressing all this because i really do know that this will be a kind of reality a lot of people are feeling mm. so we're not going out are we it sounds like we're going out with the whimper <laughs> i'm waiting for the bang <laughs> yeah like a wet a wet whimper I, you know i'm like, feeling tired just listening to us <laughs> i know i know and 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 i think you know if 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 one thing comes out of this is that we're realising that we all have limits, our limits, mm -hmm. and that we must find ways to 
just let go of stuff that's not important and take a break and be kind to ourselves and be compassionate to ourselves. Mm. Yeah, and that may be letting go of plans we had or appointments or that list of social things we wanted to do because it's December and, you know. Mm. Yeah, so it can be really good and really helpful because, Mm. you know, if we get that message. But for some, this won't feel quite like that. For some, this will feel like they're really riding a beautiful wave and they're just being very fluid and going with it and they might find this energy quite beautiful, actually. Mm, I'm actually looking forward to the socialising, you know, um, yeah. because that's become part of my, that's my support network and I love being in the energy of that, those that's people. Right. You know. That's right. And, and having a bit of fun and taking mm. a break from the daily stuff and, yeah. Taking a break from life. That's right. <laughs> the world in general, you know. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, look, this is all, and we were just mentioning this before, this is also this um, energy is, is increased because Jupiter is coming to the very end of Pisces. So Jupiter, as we speak, is at 29 degrees of Pisces slowly making his way towards the end. And remember, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, so it represents that energy of release and emptying out. And we often feel, as an astrologer and as a Piscean person with a number of planets in Pisces, I hear a lot how people often romanticise Pisces, and I get it because, hey, I'm a romantic, let's face it, I, and and a lot of it's true, but there is a side to this sign where we can feel just the overwhelming pain and suffering of this human condition, you know, and that can be just overwhelming and very exhausting sometimes. Mm, yeah. It just feels like everywhere we see, we just see pain and suffering. And I don't mean to be negative, but I think this is a part of the reality of this sign. Mm. So... Jupiter at the last degrees is about to, on the 21st of December, pretty much at the same time as the um, solstice, leave Pisces and go into Aries. Mm. So there is a shift of energy coming, folks. There is. There absolutely is. And that that Neptunian influence will really begin to um, weaken, actually. Mm. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but just make sure you're not standing on the train tracks when you see it. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and and those planets in Sagittarius will be one by one making their way out of Sag. You know, and Sag is, a, you know, as we know, a sign of great inspiration and hope and vision and fun and adventure. Um, they will, those squares to Neptune will also move on and dissipate and they'll go into Capricorn. So there is a change of energy. Yeah. On its way. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's break it down a little bit. So on the 2nd of December, Mercury at 22 degrees of Sag, square Neptune. On the 4th, Venus at 22 of Sag, square Neptune, while Neptune is exactly stationary on that day. So though, you know, this first week of December, very much this energy. Then on the 7th, Mercury moving quickly will leave Sagittarius and go into Capricorn. And this is the day before the full moon. Mm. So Mercury in Capricorn shifts our focus and attention to things practical. Mm. We become more focused, more systematic, more, um, you know, Mercury, uh, Capricorn likes a plan. Mm. That? Yeah, so it's practical thinking. Practical thinking, more yeah. strategic. Yeah. You know, maybe being able to make um, some practical decisions re- and realistic. Capricorn is really mm. realistic. Mm. Yeah. I think another thing too is uh, understanding that the power of our thoughts can can actually manifest in our reality. Exactly. So becoming more aware about of that as well. Exactly. And, you know, the, the system of the zodiac has a wonderful sequential unfolding. And so Sagittarius is the vision. Mm. This amazing vision of what is possible. 
then comes Capricorn and says, okay, great. How are you going to actually turn that into a reality? Yes. Yeah. You know, what are the steps that you need to do to actually make that real? Yeah. Basically head in the clouds, but feet on the earth. That's right. That was a, a lesson I learned from my parents, actually, because my mother was a city girl and my father was a country boy. So yeah, he, he was the dreamer and the, you know, lived his life around horses. He was the cowboy. My mother would say, oh, that's really nice. Where's the money? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How are we going to eat? How are we going to live? That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. And that's so Capricorn. That's right. So um, so there's that, that shift to Capricorn begins just before the full moon. So on the 8th, the full moon occurs at 16 degrees of Gemini, exactly opposite the sun at 16 degrees of Sagittarius. Happy birthday, Cheryl. Thank born you. on this, actually born on this full moon. And that won't happen every year that your birthday will be a full moon. Mm, mm. You know, but it's great. Mm. It is. What will be interesting for you and for all of us is that our lovely friend Mars, still retrograde, is mm. also at exactly 16 degrees of Gemini exactly on that moon and in opposition to the sun so the full moon is carrying the energy of mars yeah wow look out people <laughs> look out people don't upset cheryl your sparks might fly well actually because it's retrograde wouldn't it be that if you've got you know what you're thinking you may not express which you ordinarily would you're going to keep it inside it can be it yeah. can be that. I find with Mars retrograde, particularly in Gemini, it can be the things you hold back and then all of a sudden you can't hold it back anymore because the frustration builds and bam, yeah. suddenly you're saying things and they're coming out like spears. Yes. You know? Um, I will. Give, give me a wide berth that day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's for a Maybe yeah. for a few days. <laughs> Maybe for a few days. But, you know, Mars energizes anything that it's touching, brings yeah. a lot of energy to it. So I would usually say this this Gemini Sagittarius full moon that would occur every December, great time for fun and partying, and it still can be. But with the presence of retrograde Mars so strong, mm. there might be some, you know, if someone's having a big party or celebrations, as an example, there could be a few sparks flying around differences of, of opinion, mm. um, you know, people wanting to take over conversations, interrupt conversations, dominate conversations, have arguments about points of view and so on. Mm. Um, what about conversations around leadership? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm thinking Mars, you know. it's a abs Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And also to, um, you know, be very interesting time around that couple of days of the full moon to observe what's going on in the world through whatever mm. avenue of media we like to keep up with things. Yeah. That could be very, very interesting because, you know, Gemini is all about information, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Information, media. And um, Sagittarius is that is that urge and that impulse to to seek truth and to speak and live truth. Yeah, and and to spread some some of that around as well. You know, got the arrows. Exactly. No? exactly. Yeah. Mm. So that could be a very interesting full moon couple of days. Quite mm. stimulating. Quite energized. Mm. Um, you know, like little things. I'd say to people, just be aware of being in traffic. Things could get a little volatile. Or a little, um, like everything's moving really quickly. It's a very highly energized yeah. combination of energies. You know, deep breaths. Mm. Every time you're at a stoplight. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, I'm just reflecting back on what I said before about, um, you know, conversations about leadership. I can just see all these little Aries people, Aries kids saying, you're not the boss of me, you know, to their parents <laughs> sort of thing. There might be a bit more of that. <laughs> a lot more of that, I think. Yeah, don't tell me what to say or what to do. 
<laughs> exactly. And we'll see that, I think, in the public sphere as well. Yeah. There's going to be a bit of verbal argy bargy, you know, yeah. out there. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite dynamic. Um, you know, tempers can flare and so on. Um, so that's the full moon. And then on the 10th, Venus will follow Mercury and go into Capricorn. Mm. Yeah. So Venus is um, in a pragmatic Capricorn sense, our values, money, resources, finances, and so on. Mm. How we spend money, how we earn it, how we manage it. Mm. Capricorns are usually very good money managers. They don't waste money. Yep. They're very careful, very astute. They're fantastic shoppers like I've met Capricorns who pride themselves and rightly so because they're very good at it on buying very very good quality stuff whatever it is mm. at very good prices you know yep. they wait for sales they do the research and then right at the right moment they pounce you know and they've they've got that thing they were after um and you know the love of things are really good quality so so that's that's just one simple expression of it Mm -hmm. um venus is also the primary relationship sign as the goddess of love mm -hmm. so while she's in sagittarius it can be a great, great time to you know to catch up with friends hang out with people socialize in capricorn our attention perhaps has turned more to to the serious business of relationships mm -hmm. yeah commitments mm -hmm. and so on yeah could even be a bit hard it can be. Capricorn, yeah. Yeah, it can be. You know, it's very pragmatic. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the reality factor here, people. You know, like this is what I'm really talking about, you know. That's like, right. Yeah. Like like Venus in Pisces might partner with someone from a place of, you know, soulful connection and romantic idealism and so on. Mm -hmm. In Capricorn very often... People come together and form long-term relationships. Um, and a part of the equation will be pragmatic matters. Yes. You yeah. Know, that you kind of ideally would be on the same page around the practical stuff of life. Yeah. Mm, I'm guessing that rules um, marriage arrangements. Yes. That's business-like. Business-like. Mm. And often the parents, you know, in those traditional cultures that, have and some still do that yes the parents you know this the, the capricorn the parent yep. is involved in those kinds of choices yeah mm. interesting yeah. isn't it yeah mm. yeah so yeah we're turning our attention to the more sort of serious side of these things the more practical side of these things mm. great time for like a couple to sit down and go okay let's really spend a couple of days focusing on our finances and where we're at and what we need to do, or maybe we need to make some hard decisions in here and some hard choices around our finances. Mm. Venus and Capricorn, you know, what what can we cut back on? The Capricorns just do that kind of quite naturally and they'd be like, yep, you bet. Whereas Sagittarius, you suggest the Sag cut back on anything like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? Unless they've got satin on their sun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like exactly. what? Yes. Exactly. Mm. So, um, so Venus goes into Capricorn and then on the 15th, the sun reaches 22 degrees. So every time one of these planets in Sag hits 22 degrees, it makes that square to Neptune, which mm. is pretty much at a standstill for the whole first half of December at 22 degrees. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's got planets in their chart around 22 degrees of any of the four mutable signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, you'll be feeling these energies, particularly the Neptunian influence, quite strongly. You know, like what are the antidotes, so to speak, of that? Yeah. Soak in a bath, go to the beach. You always want to soak in a bath. I know. I always <laughs> mention that because it's so... It's so soothing, you know, you can shut the door and just shut the world out for a while. Yes. Do you have candles? Candles. 
Yes. Lovely music. Yeah. Fun salts or, you know, Epsom salts, whatever. Yep. Lovely bubbles. Hot tap on. Yep. Mm. Um, or just, you know, immersion in water. Mm. Now, then we come to the big event of December, and that is Jupiter. Mm. The big planet of it rules Sagittarius and traditionally Pisces, biggest planet in our solar system, represents all things to do with expansion, growth, increase, more. So, you know, Jupiter in a sign is more of whatever that sign represents. Mm. And we've certainly seen more rain, a lot of rain this year because Jupiter's been kind of mm. in our Pisces quite a lot this year. Mm. Um, so that shift out of the last degree of the entire zodiac, 29 degrees of Pisces, to zero degrees of Aries, which is the entire zodiac's birthing point, you could say, that mm. is like zero point, the first sign, the first degree, zero degrees and zero minutes, is a big deal. And it occurs on the 21st of December, Brisbane time, about 0.32, about exactly, 0.32 a.m. in the morning. Mm. So in the um, around midnight, um on the early morning of the 21st, Jupiter will leave Pisces and not return to Pisces for another 12 years. Hmm. And it will march, and I use the word march, which is a very Aries kind of word, straight through Pisces through to May. He won't retrograde back. He's just going to be full steam ahead, direct motion, moving fast, which Aries loves bringing this big new energy and I feel that's going to be a sense of great forward momentum mm. and it will be helpful to alleviate some of the tiredness as like a reignition a reigniting of a bit of fire yeah in a practical sense I'm thinking because it's our bushfire season then isn't it so I'm hoping it doesn't flare up in that respect in the you know, on the world stage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of rain here and water tables are mm. high and the ground's pretty wet. It's, mm. I don't think we're going to see it as bad as we did in 2019. Yeah, but it might be in some other countries. But in some other countries, absolutely. Yeah. It's just yeah. fire. Yeah. This is why I thought it was really interesting to keep an eye on the news. Yeah. In, in that respect to see how that uh, reflects the uh, the planetary movements. Exactly. Mm. That's That's right. So... Big energy, it can be a real boost of confidence, a boost of, ah, oh, now I'm ready to maybe set wheels in motion. I mean, when a planet just moves into a sign, it's still very early and it, it hasn't gotten full speed and momentum yet. But there's still, I've noticed over these, if I'm paying attention, I can actually feel, see and experience the change of energy. Mm can feel it kick in mm. it's um you know it's quite real so jupiter going into aries um some people will love that because it it's it they have an affinity with that energy anyway you know it's real bold warrior um entrepreneurial mm. like someone turned the green light on and says let's go yeah, it's like paving the way forward, isn't it? Paving the way forward, mm. yeah. yeah. Because right now is really not the time. Mm. It just really isn't. This is a time to be relinquishing and releasing and letting go yeah. and just emptying out, you know, and resting we, when we can. You can feel that too. You know, I, I just about everyone I speak to in my circle of influence, small circle, um, yeah. you know, they've felt the same thing, you know, so... Yeah just so that everyone listening to this or watching it knows that you're not alone, that other many others are going through it too. Definitely. Right. That's right. So this is not right now the time. I mean, we can make plans and have ideas and plant yes. seeds and so on, mm. as we did, as we chatted earlier, mm. but it's the time to set those in motion and to implement them, you know, and to lay it down. 
Um, yeah, I and again, the new year, of course, planets going to Capricorn, it's the new year, but Jupiter will be in Aries. Mm. That will be really helpful. Mm. The other piece, of course, is that um, Mars turns direct again later in January. Um, I didn't write down the date. I thought I had written down the date. Um, offhand, I can't remember it. Somewhere towards, in, in the second half of January, Mars will turn direct. That will be another sense of, right, okay, <laughs> you know, forward momentum again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just cogitating on all of that, you know, yeah. letting it percolate away. And, yeah, because we can all see how that can um, reflect in our own lives as individuals. You know, we, we're we dealing with things. We've been dealing with things for ages, but obviously every day. But, you know, you can see, okay, well, I'm, you know, it's coming to the end of the year and I just want to have a break, uh, which everyone is always looking forward to at this time of year anyway. That's right. That's um, right. But I think people are feeling it more strongly this year. I do too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, the th right now the thought for me to be active, uh, more active next year is like, oh, no. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to be less active. You know? That's right. Like less, not more. That's yeah. Right. But I know when I catch the wave of those energies, it will trigger that and I'll shift again. That's right. Yeah. But I think that that new way will be new in some way mm -hmm. because of, you know, so many things that have just been, you know, released in this in this period. So it won't look exactly the same, will it? Mm, no, not at all. Yeah. And, you know, and 2023 is, is a different year in so many ways. It's a shift from the tiger year to the rabbit from a six year to a seven year yeah planets number of planets are changing signs significantly so it'll have a very different kind of an energy and we'll definitely mm. talk more about that as we go on yeah definitely a, a different theme each each year from 2020 21 22 and then 23 all have a different theme they do that we're working with yeah, de most definitely they do. Um, so Jupiter goes into Aries. It's like an ignition point. Mm. And on the same day, the sun at zero degrees of Capricorn will make a square to Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries. So mm. this is actually, when Jupiter turns direct, this will actually be the solstice. Yeah. Right? It's the, huh? um, I mean, Jupiter goes into Aries the day before the solstice. So Jupiter is the 21st, solstice is the 22nd this year. Mm. But at Jupiter will still be at zero, making a square to the sun at zero Capricorn. Mm. And the solstice happens every year when the sun is at exactly zero degrees of Capricorn. That is the solstice point. Mm. They vary, you know, by a day or two each year. Yeah, yeah. So this solstice, which is always an important point in the year, will have that square to Jupiter. So mm. I like the um, juxtaposition of those two. Ju you know, Jupiter and Aries is go. And don't think too much about it. Just get on with it. This, when the sun goes into Capricorn, it's a more considered, deliberate, mm. strategic, organized. Let's make a plan, says Capricorn. Yeah, well researched. <laughs> yes. Oh, I haven't who's got time for that, says Aries. You know, yes. I'm off and away. So it's 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 so interesting, isn't it, that we yeah. we we enter this um solstice point towards the end of the year with these two energies in a strong contact with each other. So that's interesting how that could play out, isn't it? How mm. one just wants to go and the other one says, hey, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Whoa there, Nellie, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get a bit organised and think this through. Which Jupiter in um, Capricorn, Does Air Capricorn, did you say? Jupiter Aries. and Aries. Aries, sorry, I'm getting confused. Square the sun in Capricorn. Yes, it's not going to like that. 
No, Jupiter doesn't. It's so impatient to get going. Yeah. So, you know, ideally and at best, those two, speaking, you know, giving them characters, those two would figure out a way to do this together, you, you know, to really bring about a good outcome. Yeah. So um, it, it's like get organised and get on with it. Mm. You know, so the Jupiter can get on with it, but let's do it in a bit of a structured, organised way and um, yeah. and get, you know, pragmatic about it while we're getting on with it whatever that means, whatever that means for everyone in whatever circumstances they're in. It's um, Capricorn to me, like a word that often comes to me with Capricorn is mission. I've met so many Capricorns who really feel like their life is a mission. It's mm -hmm. a real purpose and mission and they're totally dedicated and focused on that mission and purpose. Mm -hmm. And the, the Jupiter and Aries can give it some real fuel. Mm, mm. So maybe that just occurs to me. Mm. Maybe this could be a really good period, you know, later in the month from that solstice point, as it is every year actually, to really be pondering on what do I feel is really my purpose, you know, and par everything away from the, mm. what is the real essential quality of purpose and how do I manifest that and how do I move forward you know that's an interesting question for many for all of us because um I've I've when I was younger I certainly felt like I was heading in a direction with a specific purpose but as I get older I feel like my purpose is there's many purposes in our life you know what I mean like there's not just one yeah, yeah one you know there's a direction that you're going but yeah. there's many variables in that direction, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree. Many, many facets to it, aren't there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that mutable energy, and, you know, you have a quite a bit of it, and so do I, mm -hmm. is all the different facets. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the point of right now is a particularly mutable period. When these planets move in, when Jupiter moves into Aries and the faster inner planets move into Capricorn, this is a shift into cardinal energy. Mm. and the cardinal signs have a sense of direction and purpose mm. you know they it's like harnessing energy and focusing it and moving forward with it whereas the mutable signs are a more challenging negative expression of all that mutable energy is like i'm just scattered in all directions at once mm -hmm. yeah right? mm. so it does feel like that at the moment. Yeah, it's a bit right? fractured, actually. Very, very. Yeah, but I think that's just the the collective trauma that we're all swimming in, you know. I think so. And I think swimming is the word. Yes, yeah, swimming and slash drowning. Yes, yeah. In some ways, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this shift to the cardinal signs is a, a real shift of focus and, and more of a kind of harnessing and kind of pinpointing a little more where we're going. Yeah, yeah. Pulling that energy in and pulling it together. Yeah. I mean, Capricorns are very focused. Mm -hmm. Cardinal signs are driven, have drive, you know. they When people have a lot of cardinality in their chart, and that's Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, they're the four cardinal signs. That's the cardinal grand cross. They do have a drive. A lot of entrepreneurs will have that. They're mm. kind of self-motivated, self-directed. Mm. Just, you know, get up in the morning and they're getting on with mm. that mission, that purpose, whatever it is. Mm. Mm. And Capricorn, the last sign on the cardinal grand cross, is the earth sign that's wanting to bring it all into actual physical manifestation. Mm, mm. You know, to accomplish the goal, the mission. And and they don't stop. They are, it's a tough sign. Yeah, very much so. Big capacity to endure all the challenges that life throws at them because I'm on a mission and I'm focused. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, so that'll bring us then to the new moon on the 23rd of December. So we get Jupiter goes into Aries. On the 21st, the solstice on the 22nd, and the Capricorn new moon on the 23rd. Remember, this is all the lead up to Christmas. Mm, yeah. 
It's always fascinated me that we have Sagittarius in the month before Christmas, but those final few days actually a Capricorn. Yeah. Yeah. And and Mercury and the and Venus will all be out of Sagittarius um, and in Capricorn. So the new moon will be at one degree of Capricorn. And so that will set the tone, of course, for the following four-week lunar cycle um, from the 23rd through that last week of December and into the first three weeks of January. So we always start the new year with the sun around 10 degrees of Capricorn. Mm. And there's a number of countries whose birth dates are actually the 1st of January and they all have their sun at 10 degrees of Capricorn. Mm. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it, that we have a Capricorn beginning. I mean, there's lots of deep esoteric significance to the sign. You know, one is that Capricorn in many ways is a sign of initiation. You know, there's a the fundamental expression of it, which is about um, working hard and achieving goals and rise, you know, climbing up to the ladder of worldly success. On a more spiritual level, it's a disciplined approach to one's spiritual path and delving mm. deeply into spiritual teachings and traditions and taking that very seriously and being profoundly committed to it. Mm. You know? And Capricorns who are more spiritually evolved, let's say, are often become quite powerful. In fact, many many because I've researched this because it was an area of interest of mine still is but years ago I did a lot of research on the charts of um, past and present spiritual teachers gurus enlightened people you know the great souls most of them have big dollops of Capricorn in their chart mm -hmm. which speaks to how you know many many lifetimes where they've done the arduous work the spiritual work because it's not easy that mm -hmm. spiritual work and, um, you know, you have to face all so many challenges yeah. and then become masters. So in many ways, it's a sign of mastery, you know, whether we're mastering things on this practical worldly level or mastering things more on a deep soul, spiritual level. Mm. Yeah, so that makes sense. serious, you know, it's a yeah. serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and a willingness to to do it. To absolutely do yeah. the work. To, to commit to that um dedication of doing things over and over and over again that's right and, yeah, and right. to go into training and to have the <laughs> discipline to mm. um you know to not give up and to keep going yeah and, mm -hmm. and then it you know it does but it's, it's you know that climbing the mountain you know the mountain might be a material worldly mountain but it might be more spirit in fact you know ramana mahashi uh very famous Indian, extraordinary sage, Capricorn, you know, lived from a very young age on a mountain. Mm. You know, this is affinity with mountains. Mm. Mm. I don't know how I got onto that, but I did. But it's an interesting sign, yeah. you know, and all the signs have different levels of functioning and operating, you know, different um, evolutionary levels. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Mm, mm. So, um, and of course, you know, Christmas time when these planets are in Capricorn, families are coming together. And so people are dealing with some of the issues related to family and some families are very strongly bonded. Some families are more traumatized. There's trauma and stuff. So all this stuff comes up often around this time. Some people go through profound loneliness, which is also a Capricorn issue often. Mm, mm. Feeling really isolated and alone bit of a lone wolf too is it yeah many mm. many ways many ways quite happy in their own just in their own company that's right it's mm. uh it reminds me of the hermit card in the tarot mm. yeah yeah you know the that why that um seeker who turns his back on the world and he holds his lamp his lamp is his guide yeah. you know yeah. into the into the um into the unknown yeah and that's that's the cardinal quality of it like that pers purposeful sense of direction to climb that mountain mm. and or whatever hardships um that presents yeah can we just go back to the christmas thing because i find that fascinating too because 
Um, you know, Capricorn is can be quite, you know, it's um basic. Uh, it's it's can be frugal. Yes. As well, even though it's clever with turning making money, it can be frugal with money too. So I find it really interesting that at Christmas time we've got Capricorn, you know, Capricorn energy. Yeah. And um, there's just abundance and stuff I know. Everywhere. And people are spending money left, right, and center like it's going out of fashion. Like, how does that happen? What overcomes that? You know? It's so interesting, isn't it? I think if people um shop early in the Sagittarius period they're likely to be very generous in their shopping and gift buying and so on and so on if they leave it till those last few days you know there might be some you know difficulties with doing that and yet I've known people who leave it till the last minute and they go out and just spend a crazy amount of money just buying everything in sight maybe that's just gift desperation spending I don't desperation I think it's <laughs> desperation I don't know <laughs> What the hell? Well, I can, you know, I don't know. Just spend five hundred dollars. That should make them happy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and I the other part of this, of course, is that spiritually, Christmas is a Christian mm-hmm. celebration. It's a yeah. it's a moment in the Christian calendar, representing you know the birth of Jesus, mm. and in, in esoteric astrology, that has very deep and profound significance in the month of Capricorn. So there's this whole other aspect to it that culturally mm. on a very superficial level it doesn't get much of a look in these days. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. probably for a long time really. Yeah. Um, but at, at the very deep core of it, there's a strong sense of, you know, I mean there's Christianity and then there are the the, the Christian mystics who are yeah. deeply committed, dedicated to their path um, mm. in a very different way, you know, mm. to the general sense of that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, yes, I, this has always long fascinated me, the different levels and layers of every sign, mm. you know, and how they manifest and operate on a very simple basic human level and then at the deeper sort of higher esoteric spiritual expression of each mm. sign. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, the new moon on the 23rd. And, I mean, regardless of what anyone's view or opinion or ideas are about Jesus Christ, the story, whether we take it as a story or a true event, I mean, the man did go through a lot, right? Ended up on a cross. Yeah. You know, and was deeply committed to his his path and purpose to the highest degree where, you know, he put his life on the line. And, um, you know, so that's that's just one, another way to really look at this Capricorn energy. Mm, yeah. Mm. To look at the um, the story around it and what it represents, I suppose. That's right. That's yeah. right. As a, as a reality or as a metaphor or an energy. You know? yeah. 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 So, you know, at Christmas is it all about, the food and the presence and the family, wonderful. Or is there space for perhaps this more serious, deeper side to that mm. time, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, just something to, you know, to ponder and consider. Mm. Um, same day on the new moon, one degree of Capricorn, Chiron, the wounded healer archetype, the great shamanic wounded healer, is stationary, having been retrograde for about five months in Aries, comes to its station, it stands still and begins to turn into forward direct motion again at 11, almost 12 degrees of Capricorn. And Mm. so Chiron will be quite prominent again around Christmas. So that can bring up, you know, we know that very often at Christmas people can go through a lot of emotional stuff. Mm, Yeah. Kinds of reasons. Mm, all the family wounds get triggered. Yes, all family traumas and so on. And mm. some people don't look forward to Christmas because of that. Um, other people love that the family comes together. So, yeah, it can be quite a strong time. Um, but, yeah, Chiron will be. So planets are moving forward 
um, but on the 29th, let's go to the end of the year, on the 29th, Mercury, fast-moving Mercury, which would normally just scoot through Capricorn in three weeks, just gets to 24 and goes, yeah, no, let's go back. Mm. So he turns retrograde on the 29th. So we go out on this year with the Mercury retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. Mm. Mm. So you know, everybody to look at maybe if you know your chart, you know, what house is that? Where is Capricorn in your chart? You know, what house does that um can you know, does that contain Capricorn in? Is it the first or the fourth or the ninth, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's the area that these energies will come <clears throat> from. Mm, mm. Interesting. And then just, just to finish off, on the 22nd of January, Uranus will turn direct. So Uranus and Mercury at the end of the year will still be in retrograde motion, but Mercury is only retrograde for three weeks. And then around about the same time, Uranus will turn direct. So from the 22nd of January, there will be a period where there will be no planets retrograde. Mm, good. Good. <laughs> so that are always and and even you know even coming through these weeks as planets turn direct like fewer and fewer planets are retrograde so so these planets as they start to move forward they they slowly pick up momentum and they move forward so this is mm. sense that things are moving forward mm, mm. yeah mm. Mm, well that's good that's good yeah yes it is. i'm sort of caught between <laughs> I'm in a Gemini moment, like, do I really want to go forward? I just want to stay here in, in the void. In the void. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. And, of course, we'll be talking about this through 2023 as well. So, um, you know, it's going to be coming up to our third year anniversary in 2023. Can you believe it? Isn't that amazing? And we just started as a one-off chat. I know. TikTok. Here we are. Yeah, TikTok. It's great. So, <laughs> oh, it's just been so much fun. And I, I hope uh, all our uh, viewers have enjoyed this as well. Not that we're winding up for the year at the moment, but we'll be back with you in another two weeks for the talk yeah. about more about the planetary uh, movements. But um, we hope you've enjoyed it. And um, do give us a like. Remember to like us if you like it. And, um, uh, you know, leave some comments. We love the comments. More comments co comments coming in. So we really enjoy that. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you once again, Babula. Been a pleasure. Oh, very, very welcome. Yep. And we will see you all again in another two weeks for the next lunar cycle. So until then, stay safe and bye for now. Bye, everyone.